Cheers to everyone for watching. My name is Mitchell, and you're watching the Stereo Picture Society. Today is a review of Drake's new album, Scorpion. Drake, also known as Champagne Poppy, also known as Aubrey Graham, also known as Degrassi Royalties, also known as The Six God. The Six God himself has come down upon us to release an album for the Canada Day Long Weekend. That's why you can hear people lighting it up and doing fireworks outside my bedroom window. Drake has been caught in some controversy following Pusha T's diss track upon him, the story of Added On, a brutal diss track towards Drake, calling him out saying that he has a son that no one knows about, which is pretty much a big part of the Scorpion album. And I'm not gonna lie, I really like Pusha T's diss track. He raps over the story of OJ, from Jay-Z, and he kills it, murders that beat, and it's amazing. I love it. In retaliation to that, Drake launched a freestyle, the Dubby Freestyle, just days after that. Unfortunately, the Dubby Freestyle doesn't make it onto Scorpion, but that's okay because he really didn't have much to say other than bashing Kanye and him. Now, I did have a lot of reservations coming into this album. This album is one and a half hours long. It's 25 tracks and a double album. With this hour and a half long album, I was hoping for a real sonic exploration for Drake. I was hoping for him to push it and for the production to be looping towards each other and have it be really consistent, tightly packed. But unfortunately, we don't see that. We see a very scattered album. <laughs> it's like I'm doing a weather report. Probably one of Drake's most inconsistent and varying albums to date. Any of Drake's songs I can handle on its own is not that that's bad. What bothers me the most about this album is its organization. So one of the listens that I was doing for this song, I started at track one, all right, and it was on Apple Music. I'm not sure if you guys are experiencing this as well when you do it on Apple Music, but let me know if you do. So I have it on track one of Apple Music, okay? And then it plays track 12. And then it goes to track 8, and then it goes to track 4. Now, I didn't play shuffle or anything, but track 4 was in its right spot. And I thought, okay, well, God's Plan is going to be right after this. God's Plan is track number 5. That didn't come. And I'm like, wait, what's, what's going on? So I searched and I'm just like, oh, okay, so this album isn't in order. Apple Music's shuffle program is literally a better organizer of this album than Drake was. <laughs> Oh my god, there's no consistency. Maybe there'll be two good songs that I genuinely enjoy together. There's a lot of awkward lyrics on most of the songs, a lot of bars that just come off really bad, and a lot of uncomfortable production. The most organized that this album gets is that the first half of the album is more rap focused and the second part is more R&B, autocroon, classic singing and Drake focus. Tone of the album starts off with the track Survival, which has some pretty cool synth production, but I really wish for more vocals coming from Drake on this just over two minute track. The next track, Nonstop, is where we start to see some awkwardness from Drake. There's just a lot of really cheesy similes that are going on. Oh man. And the one line where he says, I'm light skinned, but I'm a dark n-word. That was one of the first cringeworthy lines on the album. Like the third track is all right, and then gets him getting hard. He spits really fast over these triplet beats. The vocal hook on it is just really like Post Malone's new album with him doing like three note things, but in the worst way possible. And then the song has a freaking Marineland quote in it. The next track on here, Emotionless, gets into Drake's son. Here there's a sick opening sample and then he spits these really honest, pretty genuine bars for the album. There's a lot of confessions on this track talking about how he was hiding the world from his kid and all about moving forward. These kind of hilarious lines about these girls just going with him to trips to Rome and then just being on their phone the entire time, hooking stuff up to Instagram like 12 hours afterward just so that they can keep on saying that they're busy. And then right afterwards, it's God's plan, and that is a banger! <laughs> Always has been a banger since the start of the year. I love it. And that kind of redeems everything for me. When Apple Music takes it on shuffle, and then goes from a crappy song to God's plan, I'm like, yeah, boy. What I love about it so much is that Drake's vocals work so well with the whoopy synths of the song. 
there's like consistent production throughout all of it. And there's a lot of taglines that people can sing along to it. Wishing and wishing and wishing on me. Yep. Right afterwards is a song, I'm Upset, which had that huge Degrassi video with it. I'm not really into this song, to be honest. I never really was. I think what could have done it for me was if Drake had, like, two or three features on this that had legitimate bars to it. And then just reading the last bar of that song, it's whack. It's... Who wrote this? Got a lot of blood and it's cold. They keep trying to get me for my soul. Thankful for the women that I know. Can't go 50-50 with no hope. It's like... This is supposed to be, like, a pretty banging song with a music video and everything, but they just ended on this really generic line. And that's kind of the problem that I see with a lot of this album. There's a lot of really generic songwriting that I just... Bo it boggles me so much. It boggles and it bothers me so much. The song 8 out of 10 sounds like a jab, like a diss track at the start, but then just quickly bleeds out into something that sounds like it has this late 2000s Empire State of Mind kind of production with it. Can't Take a Joke literally sounds like a 17 year old wrote it and performed it too. Just makes me feel like we're in it for the long haul with Drake's flow. Like, we are not getting away from this overcompressed, really steady, not even strong kind of flow that Drake's always had. The Jay-Z feature on the next track was totally underwhelming for me. The album starts to redeem itself a little bit with the 12th track, Is There More, where Drake actually spits some pretty decent bars, and honest ones too. For some reason, this track kind of is a reminder of how Scorpion's production is like. For some reason, there's a lot of like vocal snippets that come before, or mostly after, the tracks, but are not infused with the track itself. This only happens in like the fifth last track of the album, In My Feelings, where the vocals are fused really well with the production. The only thing with that for me is that I felt the last 45 seconds, and I felt maybe the percussion jam could have been ingrained into the vocals and Drake stuff. In the track Peak, there's kind of a conversation that gets sampled toward the end of the track, which sounds like Drake's son's mom and Drake's mom herself, and maybe also Drake, but he sounds kind of weird if it is Drake. Having this conversation, it's heated, it's about letting the public know about their kid. And I feel like Drake is really taking this second half to really talk about his relationships with women and how he feels for them. Talking how the summer is already over even though it just got started due to all this beef that came up in the song Summer Games. To be honest though, for Summer Games, the synth lead in that production really sounds like it could be from the summer games <laughs> of like 80s and 90s. I can kind of give it to Drake for the song Jaded. He takes these lyrics but he really raps over them even though they're changing like rhyme structure and like stress syllable structure. He's still taking them and really making a decent flow out of them through his beat. Then we get to one of the singles for the album Nice For What which I never really liked. The the music video was fine, but there's this high pass on the vocals that get sampled, and there never really is enough low frequency throughout the entire thing to justify having it on repeat. Like, the bass is barely audible. I do really like Finesse, the track that comes after that. It's fire. I love that you got no finesse. Like, ooh. <laughs> it just made me... Mm, maybe grew to it. But then right after that is Ratchet Happy Birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> like I'm not even joking. Here we go. <laughs> that's like the only meme I can see from this other than the God's Plan shoulder thing. Track afterwards, That's How You Feel probably wins the award for the worst set of lyrics where it really just sounds like <laughs> it sounds like a mom. Build the sun up. Grind till you come up, work all winter, shine all summer, vacate to a place where you could take pictures, post on Insta. Like it really, it really just sounds like if my grandma knew culture and wanted to rap over this. This comes second though to the line in the second to last track, Final Fantasy, where he literally says, slashing like guns and roses. Oh man. I honestly think that's worse than when Eminem said, X lax. Blue Tint with Future is supposed to have this one throw towards the US President Trump, but it's really gentle. I wish Future was credited, honestly, but he just comes off 
just as underwhelming as Jay-Z. Final highlight this album has to offer is the Michael Jackson collaboration that he has. They found this sample and hook from Michael Jackson's Music Vault and decide to sample it for this album, and it is killer. It's not a saving grace for the album at all, but I think it will go down as like a really good single coming into the future. Just to show how inconsistent this album is, it goes right into After Dark. It has this really kind of average Ty Dolla Sign feature, which isn't even that hard. The production honestly sounds like it's from 2005. <laughs> and to make things better, the last minute of this song is this late night FM station that literally sounds like it's from 2005. This like late night R&B thing that literally calls out Luther Vandross and Fantasia. <laughs> like it honestly sounds like some like 40 year old person just went fishing into their files for shit and was like oh hey I got this thing from 2005 and Drake's just like fucking yes my dude and meanwhile Drake is on focus is all hell making this record. I don't care what he says on the duppy, I'm, he is not focused. So that's just the thing. Drake has a lot of people working for him on his album. He had maybe over 30 producers, a whole bunch of writers, but somehow it just came out just as unfocused. And I feel really bad for the producers and the writers. Like, honestly, they should have been working on a project that they felt would have more of a legacy moving into the future. I feel like this album would probably just appeal to people that were already into Drake in the first place. It's inconsistent and I don't really enjoy it. I mean, I'd rather listen to a whole bunch of other hip-hop artists than Drake at this point. So now it's time for me to rate this album, and I'm going to do a completely different rating system on the Stereo Picture Society with it. I'm not going to do numbers. I have kind of a chart, <laughs> a little homemade chart just describing what my rating system's like. I rate on enjoyness, and here's the thing, like, there's a lot of really mediocre albums out there, and it just depends on whether somebody enjoys it or not, that they'll rate it like a 7 or like a 6 or something like that. Honestly, if something's favorable enough, most critics are going to be talking about it anyways, and it's going to be 6 out of 10 or like a 3 out of 5, and it's normally going to be in that 6 to 8 range. I figure, why not just have the standard of a favorable album be favorable and have that be like at the one point, right? And if it's good enough, have it be closer to that. So that's what I have here. I have my rating system and this is where I don't enjoy it. This is where it's like good. And this is where I'll actually get into like, holy shit, it's a 10 or like a nine or an eight or something like that. Or like my seven where like I actually enjoyed it and I would give it praise in the star. So for Drake's, I'd probably give it like a yeah, like a, a down. It's a meh. I'm pretty indifferent towards it. I'm not going to listen to this album again. I'm going to listen to a few tracks. I thought The Nest was awesome, and God's Plan is awesome, and like maybe a couple others, but no, I'm not into it. I really hate outros because people skip to the next video afterwards, but I just want to say because it's the first one, thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing if you did and liking the video. And I'll see you in the next one, okay? And there's some links down below to my WordPress site and my Twitter page if you want to check out what I'm listening to or stuff that I'm up to. Bye. Right. Cheers. And happy Canada Day too.